Harper, what do you got? What do you got? Harper, what do you got? All right, so it's Saturday and been working on the brakes all morning. Uh, the wife actually helped me and said that was pretty cool and we got them uh, bled. So had a couple of leaks, uh, took forever to get them pumped through the system, you know, to get air to the actual calipers. Um, but they had never been done. There was no reason to really do none of that whenever the car wasn't ready to go. So all the brakes are bled on it. Um, there's a small percentage. There still may be a leak here or there. Um, so I told her that I wasn't trying to get it 100%. Basically, we have, when I spin the wheel, every single wheel stops. Uh, so we have caliper engagement on every single wheel. Uh, when me and Mike nut and bolt the car, we will then um, bleed it one more time with me pumping it this time, because she knows kind of what you're supposed to feel, out, feel like, but obviously these are manual brakes that are a little different than what she's used to. Um, they're probably different than what I'm used to. Um, one thing, that she did say is that obviously the more she pumps it the tighter it gets so uh comment below if you're used to manual brakes um is that how it always is or will we eventually get it so that um every single time you hit it like it's um it's um it's tight or is it one of them deals where every if you were just cruising and you hit them they'll stop but obviously if you pump them a couple of times and then hit them that they'll get really, really firm. So kind of let me know in the comments what they're supposed to feel like so I kind of know what to look for when me and Mike gets on it. Um, when we, me and Mike gets back, but we'll probably be on it here in three to five weeks. Uh, we'll probably do it again um, after everybody else gets done with everything. So uh, we're gonna get the car outside, hopefully this afternoon about to check the weather and uh, get it washed up, get it cleaned up. Last night I got the uh, second set of uh, not Zeus fasteners, but they're to push uh, style Zeus ones in the hood. So got these right here. Uh, the second row. So you got one up here and then one about, you know, halfway. So we got the second row done yesterday. So they're all on. Uh, so we're literally coming through it. I need to put the uh, other plug in the cowl so it don't leak. Uh, basically, where the windshield wipers were bolt from the bottom side. Uh, I've already done one, but I never got back up in there and done the second one. Um, might need to get some scratches out of this window already from rolling this thing up and down. Um, you can get scratches out of Lexon with just a heat gun. In case anybody didn't know, I'm gonna wash it and see what it looks like. Probably need to put some wax over it to help protect the Lexon. Um, Lexan, obviously. Uh, yeah, that's where we're at though, as of Saturday at two o'clock. All right, y'all, we got her out of the garage, got her washed up, ready for Chris come uh, Monday. So uh, she's all clean. Uh, you can see now that she's clean some of the damage. Let me show y'all some of this. So this damage right here, if you see these little white spots in the paint, this is from grinding too close to the car and uh, little pieces of hot slag uh, getting on it. You can actually see on some of it up close, if it'll focus, where um, it actually rusted into it. So there you go. You can see what <laughs> the, uh, the damage that I did to the car. And it really is not on none of the sides. It's honestly just right here on the top of the fender whenever I was grinding it at that uh, time just a little tiny uh, spackles that are all all on it from the uh, uh, hot sparks uh, sitting on top of it so uh, maybe one day we'll wet sand and buff that out I'm gonna put a coat of wax on it by hand probably tomorrow it's supposed to rain here so I'm gonna coat it with uh, uh, wax that'd be the first time that it's been coated by hand with wax while it's out and then maybe at some point we'll come with some 25 or some 3000 and uh, buff out that uh, fender. So fender might need a repaint, but um, I really don't see myself ever repainting that over something like that because I actually do use my car. I'm not very uh, picky about it being all, um, you know, OCD about anything sitting on top of it or anything. So, you know, y'all know that I lean against my fenders and scratch everything up. So I done got mud all over the freaking bottom. I need to rinse back off of it for rinsing the driveway off but um yeah we're gonna get a wax on her while she's out tomorrow so figured i would just show y'all real fast because it's so cramped in the garage you can't ever really see a good shot of it and i mean we've seen it when it was out the other week at the shop but that's it so i'm gonna get her put back inside and um that's probably gonna be it for saturday afternoon all right about to load this thing up
Cut it. Cut it. Cut it over. That's good right there. No, now straighten it back out. All right, now close the door. You're good. What'd she say? We got a uh, screw in the tire, so we're gonna fill this thing with some slime, just in case. All right, we're gonna fill this pig up. Uh, White Bull is about uh, a little over an hour from me, hour and some change. If you're from there, you have to call it Wattville. <laughs> Everybody else, we call it Whiteville. We're gonna fill this uh, pig up, and then we're gonna get this thing over to uh, Chris's shop. All right, so we made it back to the house. I didn't really get no video of us unloading the car at Chris's house. It was kind of one of the things where you go to drop the car off and uh, when you're meeting, uh, doing business with somebody for the first time, then you're kind of giving the rundown and kind of figuring everything out and explaining what you've already got, what you don't got, everything that I have that I don't need, um, you know, all of that. Because I have been trying, as you know, to figure out a lot of the stuff by myself and, um, you know, redoing stuff, learning, changing stuff, uh, you know, et cetera. So I told him that anything that he wants to cut out and redo or change up, that he's welcome to cut all of it out if it needs to come out, you know, and if it's just going to be getting in the way or making things complicated, cut it out. Of course, he won't have to touch anything that we just did the other month with the headlights, turn signals, all that stuff. But after talking to Chris, learned like tonight that he recommended um, don't need a transfer don't need a line lock. So I had installed the line lock. I never hooked it up to a button, but he said he's never even used one in his life and there's a ton of people that don't use them. So um, he said it's kind of just overkill. So he's not gonna wire the line lock in. Uh, I have it simple enough where I can do it if I want to. So if it's one of the things where we take the car out and I feel like I need the line lock, then I can easily come to the house and connect the wires underneath the driver's seat on our carbon panel and throw it on the switch, be done with it. He'll do the bump, the trans brake, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then after talking to him more, actually, I don't need to bump. So I had already installed the, uh, um, NOS, uh, solid state relay that John recommended, um, in the car. So I already had it in there. Just nothing was wired up, obviously. And then between talking to him and John, uh, explained that most of the time pro charger cars, blower cars, stuff like that, don't normally bump in that you can bump in, but that most of the time they don't, that they just kind of roll in to stage um so talking back and forth i think we've kind of come to the conclusion that uh chris recommends that we do not um hook up the um uh solid state relay and do not use a bump so that's another kind of the curveball that because i mean a solid state relay was like 80 90 dollars uh for it uh, so kind of just another way that um you end up wasting money when you don't know what you're doing. So I'm sure also I'm, I feel like I have an extra harness, a Holly harness that I probably don't need. We'll see when Chris gets done wiring the car, we'll see how much stuff that he takes out and that I didn't need, um, you know, out of curiosity. And we'll uh, bring it to y'all and kind of show you. Uh, lesson learned because, you know, I don't understand this stuff. So I try to pick up, pick up bits and pieces here and collect stuff as I go. And then what ends up happening is you end up spending money on stuff that like I said, now we have no use for on some of it. So maybe we'll use it on the next car. Maybe we'll sell it to somebody if somebody needs one, you know, at the track or something. And maybe I'll just keep it in the trailer and sell it for what I'm in it. Um, who knows? But uh, what that means for y'all is now that this car is at wiring um, and then we're going to get it back. I don't know how long we're going to keep it because it's going to go to Jason for headers. There might be a little window between the uh, uh, getting it back from wiring and going to headers that we keep it and do some stuff to it. But if it's only gonna be a week, I would like to finish the enclosed trailer before we go pick it up from wiring. Pick it up from wiring in the enclosed trailer. And if it's only gonna be like a week and go to Jason, we're just gonna leave it in the enclosed trailer and then take it up there uh, to Jason. In the meantime, what are we gonna do? We have an empty garage, nothing in it. This channel is about the Comet, Mavericks, all that. So we have to finish up Tahoe. So Tahoe is definitely going to um, 
get finished up, a lot of it's gonna get done at the shop because I don't really have the room here. Um, the thing is actually a little too long. I measured it out. It only leaves me like a foot up here to walk around. If I keep the bumper tight against the garage door, it's only like a foot. So the Tahoe is 204 inches is what Google says. I gotta confirm that tomorrow. Um, but I just don't have it. So I don't really have the room to be working on the Tahoe in the house. I mean, I can detail the inside and work on some of that, but we'll see. I'm sure it'll eventually come home. I'm probably gonna knock the fenders out, body work out, shop and stuff. But after that, what are we gonna do? So um, I'm in the makings of working on some stuff for the Red Maverick that's outside. Uh, so I have talked to Mike, we got some plans. We gotta get the thing where it will roll first. Uh, we have to overcome that issue. If you remember the Maverick videos, um, how the beads on the wheels were messed up. It won't hold air, the tires are dry rotted, all that. Um, we'll show you when we dive into it, but I think we're gonna try to make a little bit of progress on the Red Maverick during our downtime, um, but priorities obviously get the Tahoe done on this channel and get the race trailer completely uh, done, them are priorities. But I don't think they're gonna entertain us uh, for the next, if Chris has it for two weeks and Jason has it for two weeks and that's a month, of downtime um, of doing nothing and we can't we can't just sit around so uh, I cannot dump money into the Red Maverick because I have to pay Chris for wiring and Jason for headers and then I gotta pay TKM for tuning and then I gotta pay somebody else for to set the suspension up so we cannot really be shelling money into the Red Maverick right now but we can make some ground on uh, cutting some of the structure out that we're not gonna need breaking it down a little bit more getting it rolling getting it on rollers and um, maybe even making some patch panels. Uh, we're gonna work on doing some stuff maybe to the trunk lid, see how light we can get that trunk lid. We might end up painting that trunk lid and putting it on um, the black car if I get it lighter and the door, the one good door, we're gonna start with the good door first. I think we're gonna try to see how much weight we can pull out of a steel door and still keep it a steel door. And then we might end up either fixing the other door or finding another door and possibly making two extremely lightweight doors to go on the black car. We also might fab up some removable OEM hinges and we might switch to lightweight uh, hinge plates for the car. So we'll see what's in store, but hang with me. We're gonna be without the Comet for at least probably two months off and on. Um, so, or at least a month. Basically both of them need it for like two weeks. So uh, we'll do some other stuff in the meantime. Uh, we might have to go to every other day on the videos if I don't have enough content to fill it because I really don't want to blow the channel up with a ton of bodywork stuff. Um, but we'll know. So go ahead and drop a comment if you have any recommendations, anything you want to see in my downtime, anything that you want to go over that I could do a video on, um, especially covering it at the shop, any questions like that, anything I could touch base on, then I'll try to see if I can uh, throw together a video during this downtime. And as soon as we get the wiring done, the headers done, it's rock and roll time, baby. Like, comment, subscribe, share, smash that notification button because things are getting serious. And before you know it, that black car is going to be ready to fire up and make it fast. Thanks, y'all.